Do you ever wonder what it would be like to be publicly hanged and then left to rot in a metal cage for all to see? The medieval punishment of hanging and gibbeting was a gruesome and terrifying form of torture that inflicted unbearable pain and humiliation upon its victims. The horror of this punishment still resonates today and serves as a chilling reminder of the brutalities of the past. Hanging As early as the 5th century, hanging was a common method of execution in England. Even though other forms of capital punishment emerged over time, they were unable to compete with hanging. Between the time of William the Conqueror and the 18th century, when hanging became the preferred means of punishment, castration, blinding, beheading, boiling, burning, and dismemberment all made appearances in England. Children as young as seven may be made to hang from a noose if they committed a crime. Those unfortunate enough to have their necks caught in a noose before the late 19th century, when the long drop was first issued, would have suffocated to death because the height of the drop was not sufficient to break the neck. The long drop was first used. After utilizing the long drop, the true cause of death was determined to be the dislocation of the vertebrae in addition to the rupture of the jugular vein. Those individuals, however, who were granted the good fortune to escape these hangings were subject to a different kind of destiny. This could have been the result of fate, good fortune, or even divine intervention. At the beginning of the 18th century, the government of Great Britain issued a decree that anyone who had survived their execution would either be hanged again, transported to the American colonies, or set free. Even though there are several documented incidents of condemned criminals surviving their hangings, it's abundantly evident that the vast majority did not. During the process, there were a few isolated incidents in which detainees lost their heads by accident. However, as the old adage goes, accidents will occur. Gibbeting Those criminals sentenced to death for serious offenses such as murder who did not survive their hangings were further punished by being gibbeted, sometimes known as hanging in chains, and put on public display as carrion for animals such as birds and rodents after their deaths. The purpose of gibbeting was to serve as a deterrent for residents to behave themselves within the bounds of the law. This was accomplished by exposing the head and other parts of a traitor upon the point of a pike for all to see. The practice of gibbeting became more common with the passage of the Murder Act in 1752. It was established for more effectively preventing the heinous crime of murder and it stated that under no circumstances whatsoever shall the body of any murderer be permitted to be buried. Instead, the bodies of murderers were to be publicly hanged in chains out dissected in front of an audience. The act that mandated this punishment lasted until 1834, when it was finally repealed. The body was taken to a new location and hung on a gibbet there. The ideal location for the gibbet and hanging cage would be one that was easily noticed or frequented by the public. There have been occurrences where gibbets have been placed on or near the site of the crime. The foul smell of decaying flesh would blow wherever the wind took it which may be a problem for residents or business owners. The practice of gibbeting gained popularity in the middle to late 18th century. There were about 293 documented incidents of criminal bodies being gibbeted in England and Wales between 1730 and the turn of the century. Because of its population size and associated social and economic concerns, London naturally experienced the greatest cases of gibbeting. Unless it needed to be moved to another location, a body was usually gibbeted within a few days of the execution. To prevent any tampering with the body, the poles were typically between 20 and 30 feet in height and studded with spikes and nails at the base. Bodies were rarely used because they may be on display for years in these cages. The human form inspired the design of gibbet irons whose bands would aid in the preservation of a decaying body. Sometimes the cage's maker would visit the site of the execution to take precise measurements of the condemned. Once it was done, the smith could seal the irons over the body by soldering or welding them close. Criminal females were not gibbeted like their male counterpart. Feminine cadavers were in high demand from anatomists and surgeons for dissection due to a growing fascination with the feminine body. The final public hanging occurred in 1868 around 30 years after gibbeting had been abolished. In the future, a lot of people were put to death inside prisons. 
The last execution in Britain did not occur until 1964, so it took quite some time for the practice to be eliminated. That's all for today's video, we'll be right back with more such videos and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.